Praise the Lord to all the viewers in the name of the Lord and the Savior Jesus Christ. So uh, today's topic is on how the Christianity is getting persecuted all over this world. And uh, we know as part of the end times, Jesus has already prophesied saying that we will be persecuted. So before getting into a persecution, Jesus already gave the symptoms of end times where false preaching, wars, rumors of wars, plagues and pestilences. After this comes persecution. It is clearly spoken in Matthew 24 as well as in Mark 13 as well. So, so God is preparing this entire mankind for persecution because as a believer you would be persecuted. Jesus suffered and we as believers we need to suffer. So let me throw some light as part of this video on how the persecution is increasing in various parts of this world. So there are certain agencies basically they tend to spend their entire year in evaluating this, in doing some research, in doing some analytics and then they publish the report on yearly basis. One such organization is Watchdog Open Door USA. So they conduct a lot of investigation research and they publish in January every year and we see 2020 January nations list how they are getting persecuted including their ranking. We see North Korea being in the first position and North Korea is in this position for the last 18 years consecutively on the first year on the first rank. And we have Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, Eritrea, Sudan, Yemen, Iran and India. We see India is in the 10th position. So I'll take a minute to explain uh, the situations, how difficult situations are in North Korea. If you are a Christian and if you proclaim gospel, then you are killed. And uh, not only that, there are a lot of stringent laws in North Korea which makes it to stand in the first position for the last 18 years. Pre pretty huge persecution. Understand uh, the situation of the believers in North Korea. There is no Bibles. Bibles are not printed. Bibles are not for sale. You cannot perform any Christian activities. You see, eight people are killed per day as part of this persecution across the world. There are 260 million Christians which are going through persecution every year and this has increased 10% con con considering the last year and uh, some statistical uh, analytics were done on the persecution across this world and this stands the report. So 8 people are killed per day. Okay. 23 are raped or harassed based on the persecution. 182 churches are attacked per week. 276 homes are burnt and 1 in 8 would have high level of persecution as part of this Open Door USA analysis. China, what's happening in China? And let us see after that what is happening in India as well. So China a year back was on 43rd position but in 2020 it has come into 23rd position. Don't get surprised in next year report it could come pretty close as well. So let me give some background and the history about China and then see how China is growing in Christianity and how what sort of challenges and what sort of persecution the China is facing. So if you see 30 years back in China the Christianity was negligible but then in last 30 years we today see 100 million Christian believers exist in China. So which means pretty steep increase, pretty exponential growth that is the reason China being a communist uh, country, they do not want to compromise on their philosophical uh, views about 
their belief. They don't have any belief or faith on any other religion like Christianity and Islam. So they, they are really worried about the future of China being a communist country will be called soon as a Christian country and they do not want that to happen. So ever since February 2018, they have put some stringent, strict laws in order to have a control on this persecution in China. But then before getting into that, let me give the statistics about the people um, and the churches in China and then I'll come to the stringent laws which China has put as imposition on these believers. So as I said, of 100 million Christians who exist in China, 30 million tend to go to the churches which are registered in the communist government. So every church which tend to exist in China need to get registration with the communist government and this church is closely monitored on a day-to-day -day basis on the daily activities what are happening through spy cameras, drones and the neighbors as well. Part of the uh, communist government, the churches which uh, tend to get registered, they cannot do evangelism, they cannot meet in public gatherings, they cannot fellowship with one another, they cannot have open meetings, public meetings. So not only this, the relationship of the Christ within them by praying for one another. So they enjoyed the fellowship of God 10 years back, but now it is not the situation. I get to understand approximately close to 5,600 house churches have been demolished, destroyed, are enforced for closure which did not get registered with the communist government. As I said, every church need to get registered with the communist government so that they can monitor the activities what are happening. Not only the activities but also each individual's face recording also using the technology is being scrutinized in all social networking uh, internet you name it whether it is Facebook or Twitter or any form of YouTube or anything and if you are a communist if you are a Chinese Chinese uh, person and if you have participated in any of this religious activity then you are condemned to jail detention severe punishment so to that extent the monitoring is happening in the churches which are getting recognized so we see that 70 million attend the house churches very secretly because there are stringent laws on the churches which are getting recognized with the government. These 70 million uh, members who run the churches, they do not want to compromise on the gospel and the manifestation of the uh, blessings of the church, which is nothing but... Uh, Many churches are asked to take down the cross inside or outside. An hour and a half before President Donald Trump signed phase one of the historic trade deal with China, a mile away, a Chinese pastor described the fear and intimidation people of faith are enduring under the communist government. Asking neighbors to spy one another, pressuring school teachers to denounce their own faith. Loving fellowship and encouraging one another to pray for one another, they do not want to miss on this, that they are not getting registered with the communist government. But the, con but the consequences and the repercussions, the pastors and the members of these house churches are attacked and uh, false allegations and uh, illegal um, allegations are put on them to put them into detentions. There are examples where a pastor is being put on illegal detention for nine years in the jail. So. Such is the situation uh, of the people who tend to have the fellowship as part of the house churches. We also see that 60 million are part of the rural areas itself. And uh, 
One sad thing for which you tend to notice, very few house churches ha have access to uh, Bible study material and theological teaching. So you don't have Bible printing, you don't have Bibles for sale in China. So that is the sad situation of the believers who are part of the China. So let me spend some time on the regulations uh, which comes as part of Article 17. As part of the legal laws of Chinese government, you cannot appoint Chinese citizen as religious ministers. Means Chinese members cannot become pastors or elders or deacons in the house churches or churches. You cannot convert Chinese citizens. Not only that, if you preach gospel to a youth who is less than 18 years, then you are condemned as an illegal activity and you will be put into detention and jail for a long time. So that is the legal law of Chinese government. Engaging in unauthorized preaching or teaching within religious activity centers. So you cannot gather publicly as believers to proclaim the gospel or perform any religious activities. Engage in preaching, teaching or conducting collection religious activities at a place other than a legally registered religious activity center without permission. Which means because there is close monitoring through camera and drone system and every activity is governed by the communist government. If you want to do some public gathering, it needs to happen with the registered legal centers only. And then you are under close monitoring. And if you go beyond what is permissible limits of a church, then your church will also get instructions to be closed. So. You need to strictly adhere to the laws of the communist government in context to the registered churches. Even the daily activity is closely monitored. So creating or selling religious print media, religious visuals or audio materials, published electronic religious materials and other religious items means you cannot distribute anything. No print media, no paper, no books, no digital, anything as part of China. Disseminating religious promotional materials, it could be probably tracks, posters or anything like that also is not allowed. So even other forms of missionary activities in the sense like, you know, health related or hospitalized related, coming in the form of missionary and doing all these activities we tend to see, right? Missionaries tend to do those activities are also not allowed. So such is the situation. Not only that, not only that, I'll add few more. Even for the funerals of your beloved ones, only 10 or 15 members of the close family members are only allowed not more than that. So you do not have even the luxury uh, to go and attend your beloved one's funerals as well. I already explained about no sale of Bibles, no evangelism, no track distribution and everything. So such is the very pathetic, critical situations where Christians of Chinese nation are living in a very difficult times. So I request the people who are listening to understand the pain of our beloved brother in Christ as part of the Universal Church and I would request you to pray. I'll just elaborate a minute on India as well. So if you see the previous government when Congress was there the persecution was not to the extent what it is today but then we were somewhere close to 
22 or some, something like that when Congress government was running. But then now we are in the 10th position. So you need to understand in last 7 to 8 years we have grown in persecution like anything. So there are a lot of uh, activities which are happening and uh, the current government of BJP whose fundamental principles and the fundamental basis is based on the RSS which is founded by a person called Goldwalker who was born in 1906 and who lived till 1970s. So as per his ideology, he wanted, the RSS wants the India to be a Hindu nation. So you see very recently the Indian government coming with a new bill called CAA, which is nothing but Citizen Amendment Act, which means every individual, every citizen of India is supposed to prove his identity as part of this nation. So he need to provide his uh, birth certificate as part of the CAA, no other card, no passport, no PAN card is going to work. So it is your identity, identity which you are supposed to prove going to your roots where you are supposed to provide the birth certificate. Not sure how many people will be able to provide and uh, project them, but the holistic objective of this exercise is to identify how many Christians are there in this India and also Muslims. So, so that they can impose some future bills for the communities like Christianity and Muslim. Not only that, I'm telling you a heads up. Within short time, you will also see anti-conversion bill. This is already, I tend to hear that it is in the, the draft stage, anti-conversion bill, where if a person is proven that he is doing evangelism or doing any, trying to persuade people to accept Christ, trying to convert an unbeliever, a Hindu, then very strict laws are going to come. Trust me, India is taking the footsteps of the nations where the persecution is very high. So India is definitely following the roots of North Korea, China, Iran. The heads up for all the believers in India is to be diligent, prayerful, be burdensome for the universal church. So I hope you understood what is happening in and around this world. But let me also give a word of encouragement as I conclude this. This is imminent. Jesus already told, foretold that the path of Christ is suffering. Lot of prosperity speakers speech about prosperity, that it is joy and everything in this world. But the joy is in Christ for the believers who tend to accept. Yes, we will face persecution. But then there is joy in that. We see, the, uh, we see even in Acts, when people were persecuted like Peter, the entire church was praying behind him. And like, you know, the more persecution happened, the more gospel was preached. While you are getting persecuted, tomorrow or maybe future, do not worry about what you are going to speak. Because the scripture in Mark 13.11 very clearly speaks about do not worry about what you are going to speak at the time. The Holy Spirit will speak out from your mouth. So that is the greatest encouragement what I would like to give you is also that if you are part of the persecution group, understand that it is one of the evidence of salvation that your heaven is assured. So it is a sign that you are a chosen, a chosen person to accomplish God's will. That's thank you. Please subscribe and like, share with your friends, family members for their encouragement and God's glory.
Open Doors USA has released its annual World Watch list, identifying the top 50 countries where it's most dangerous to follow Jesus Christ. Our senior international correspondent, George Thomas, has been covering the plight of Christians around the world for years and joins me now with more on who made the 2020 list. George. Thank you, Mark. Well, let us start right at the top. North Korea takes the number one spot again for the 18th straight year as the worst place in the world for believers, rounding out the top 10 countries. Countries you can see right there, Afghanistan, Somalia, Libya, Pakistan, Eritrea, Sudan, Yemen, Iran, and India. According to Open Doors, an average of eight Christians were killed for their faith every day last year. 23 Christians were raped or sexually harassed in faith-related violence. And on any given week, a shock in 182 churches or church buildings were attacked and 276 Christian homes burned or destroyed every month. Open Door says one in eight Christians worldwide live in places where they endure high levels of persecution for simply believing in Jesus Christ. Even as President Trump signed a phase one of a new trade deal with China, today Dr. David Curry, president of Open Doors USA, singled out China's quote unparalleled human rights crimes against Christians and accused Beijing of seeking to wipe religious sentiment from its country using a dangerous surveillance system. By the way, China jumped from number 43 in 2018 to 23 this year. China is building what I think is a blueprint, a roadmap of persecution for other regimes around the world. And they're doing it with surveillance, with a social score that, that measures Christian behavior, attending church, taking your kids to Sunday school as a negative thing. And they're taking that social score and melding it with surveillance, not just on the street to protect the citizens, but an invasive surveillance inside the churches. And they're shutting down house churches that won't comply and others as well, arresting pastors that won't play along with their surveillance system. Dr. Curry says 260 million Christians were affected by extreme levels of persecution last year. That is up from uh, 245 million the year before, Mark. George, did you have any surprises with this year's list? Uh, I, I mean, a few. I mean, obviously, number one, North Korea, as I mentioned, 18th uh, year, straight year in, the, in a row, uh, and the situation in North Korea, as we have been reporting here for quite some time, it's a horrific place. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, you cannot pray, you cannot hold a Bible, you cannot evangelize, you face death, imprisonment, torture. It's a horrible place. One of the surprises is that China, and we'll talk about this in a second here, I'm surprised China didn't make the uh, top 10, Mark. And as you've reported many times, the situation for China's Christians is yeah. dire. Open Doors says the government has deployed an extensive surveillance mechanism to watch Christians. Yeah. What do you know about this? Well, just as uh, Dr. Curry mentioned there, just imagine it's like a social score. So, Mark, if you take your daughter or your son uh, to Bible school or you take her to, to, to church or you go to an evangelism event or you go to, uh, you know, friends uh, uh, to, for a prayer meeting, you get a social score and it's a negative social score. So if you decide to go help the poor. It's a negative social score. So all of these, they're trying to create a sort of a picture of who you are. If you're a believer, the social score is going to go negative. And in that way, you can get persecuted, arrested, or killed. What about the trade deal with China? Can the U.S. use that to influence yeah. China at all on human rights and religious freedom? Uh, you know, uh, President Trump uh, told our David Brody uh, when he first came into office that uh, the persecution and the plight of Christians around the world was of top concern. He wanted to do everything to protect believers around the world. I hope that uh, tied in with this, uh, this major trade deal is the ability for the United States to sit down with friends behind closed doors, not in public, not to humiliate the Chinese in public, but in private. In, in, in private to say, listen, what can you do? What can you do? Realize that Christians are not a, are not a threat, but a benefit to your country. You were in India recently. Yeah. It's number 10 on the list. What sort of persecution are Christians there facing? They are facing Mark, tremendous persecution. If you are a Christian, you don't have access necessarily to health care, education. You can't run for political office. The Hindu-led uh, uh, BJP government is really coming down hard on this whole idea of conversions. You see people getting baptized. Many of those are Hindu converts, and they're trying to stop this. It's a, a, a real dedicated, uh, targeted campaign to make sure that Christians... Uh, Hindus do not leave the Christian faith. 